So I'm going to give you two things today to walk away with. And you may want to start and try them and give it a little try, or you may want to wait a little bit and dip your little toe in. Because one of the things, well, this isn't one of my normal two, but we are living in such an age of chemicalization. Chemicals, chemicals, chemicals. There's chemicals everywhere. There's chemicals in everything you do. And we've just kind of accepted the fact that all of these chemicals are normal. Has everybody here seen the uh, film Food Inc? Yes. And if you hadn't, haven't, Food Inc. If you haven't, rent it, or we show it here sometimes. Um, you need to see it because it's not even about eating healthy or being a vegan or a vegetarian. It's about learning what's really happening with your food in this day and age. It's about, you know, long before I became a vegetarian, I used to go to the kosher butcher to buy chicken for my, for my family because at least they killed them humanely and you knew what was going on there. In the olden days, when my grandfather would go buy a chicken, he would go and they'd pick it out of the crate and they'd do the dirty, yep, they'd bring its neck and do the dirty deeds right there. But at least you were eating a chicken. You weren't eating chemicals with a little bit of chicken added to it. <laughs> and, and, and here's the deal, folks. You know, going to these fast food places like Popeyes and McDonald's, you are really not only doing an assault on you, but your planet. So if you leave today with nothing else, upgrade your experience. Say that I'm no longer going to do these really, you know, low, low, low levels of feeding myself. The most magnificent machine you'll ever be given. You should put all your money and time right in here. Everything needs to go in here as far as I'm concerned. When people tell me, well, I don't have enough money to do this or you're too far away, you know what? If they tell you you got to show up at Northwestern four times a week to have a deadly chemical put in your arm, mm -hmm. chemo, you show up. Mm -hmm. And you don't think twice about it because your insurance company is paying it. But you see, this is how we feed the system. And so I just want people to wake up and pay attention. It isn't necessarily about being like me, being a vegan, being a vegetarian, being a raw food. It's about waking up. And that's why I'm so excited about streaming this, because my book comes out the end of this month. Do we have a picture of the book? Oh, um, my book comes out the end of this month, and uh, I'm very excited about it. Uh, can somebody grab one of my books? Uh, and <laughs> thank you, Ms. Wanda. Uh, my book comes out the end of this month, and my real joy is just telling people, just shaking them a little bit and saying, you need to wake up. You need to wake up. You need to see what's going on. You need to get off of this, this pendulum, this just kind of slow track in this negative gravitational pull taking you in the other direction. And you do it so easily because everybody's doing it. Humans are wolf-like. We're tribal. We like to be like the people around us. We like to do what the people around us are doing, right? Everybody says, let's go for a drink. Okay, whether you want to have a drink or not. Hey, let's go for coffee. Everybody, hey, whether you want to or not. Let's go to dinner, whether you're hungry or not. You go. Who says, let's go for water? <laughs> You see, we do what's comfortable and what everybody around us is doing. So we just kind of accept it and you just kind of, and then you wake up in the morning and you're feeling miserable and you go, why me? What happened to me? Well, this internal environment is creating what's happening to you. Everything you put in here, I don't care how small it is, everything you put in here translates into everything going on in your body. It's all connected. You can't compartmentalize it and take it apart and say, well, I just ate this fat, so it's going to put some fat on my butt. That fat is doing other things, too. That fat has chemicals in it. It has growth hormones and steroids and antibiotics that are feeding the cancer cells in your body. We all have cancer cells at some time. How fertile a ground do we create for it to metastasize? Bring it on down, can you? Oh, well. How fertile a ground do we create for it to metastasize, right? That's what it's all about. So everything that you're putting in here, it's like, is it going to feed some cancer cells? Is it going to feed this? Is this chemical? That's what it's doing to you. It isn't just going in there and evaporating and coming out in your poo, which most of you, it's not coming out in your poo. It's staying in there and it's rotting and it's putrefying and doing all kinds of things to you too. You see, we have this thought that we eat some food and we get our protein and our calcium from the chunks of food we're eating, right? Doesn't that feel, doesn't that sound right that that's what you're doing? I got a stool here. That you're eating chunks of food. The reality is our cells live off the gases from the liquids, which is why you're supposed to chew your food until it's a liquid, and then it's those gases feeding your cells. So if you have a lot of stinky gases coming out of you, that's what's feeding your cells, and that's why you're growing old and tired and sick. 
So am I asking you to be perfect? Absolutely not. I'm asking you to wake up and just start to think. So every little thing you do, no matter how small or large, you're participating in your life or your death. It's that simple. And you get to make the choice every moment of the day. But unfortunately, the world isn't set up to make the right choices. There's a McDonald's on every other corner. There's a Starbucks on every other corner. There isn't a Karen's on every other corner, right? Hopefully you'll get me to that point, right? <laughs> so, you know, you just, I'm hungry. Whatever's convenient and easy. I'm thirsty. Well, everybody's doing, I'm tired. Let me do some caffeine to wake me up. Let me tell you, uh, cancer loves three things. It loves mucus, it loves yeast, and it loves acid. And caffeine is one of the most acidic things on the planet to your body. And they've got 40,000 Starbucks out there. So you wonder why it's one in two people with cancer? You're drinking yourselves this coffee all day because you're tired. But let's stop and think a minute. You're tired, so you need a brown liquid to wake you up. Why are you tired? You weren't born tired. You know, we are connected to the circadian rhythms of the universe. So when the sun comes up, our bodies are supposed to get up. And as the sun comes down, we're supposed to gradually lose our in, in, um, energy so that then we rest and regenerate for the next day. So if you're tired at 10 in the morning when you wake up, what's that telling me? It's telling me that your cells didn't get any food to wake you up. Your cells didn't get any fuel or nutrients to get you up. So you need a drug to make you get going for the day. But you don't really have the real energy to do it. This is a false energy. And that false energy in my world is killing you. If you have a horse that can't walk from here to here, and you take spurs and you kick him to make him keep walking, he didn't get energy from the kick and the spurs, did he? He walked further than he was supposed to go, and he's going to drop dead, tired, and dead a lot sooner than he was supposed to. So you see, if you need your caffeine every day, your body is just saying, I've got, I don't have enough nutrients to perform. I get up when the sun comes up. I wish I didn't sometimes. I'd like to be able to sleep in. But my body is so programmed that when the sun comes up, and it doesn't matter if I'm in a different time zone. I can be in a 14-hour different time zone. The sun comes up, my body gets up. And each and every one of your bodies are like that too. It just gets connected. We are connected. We are symbiotically connected to everything around us, our universe, the moon, the tide, the stars, each other. We are symbiotically connected to everything around us. That's the way it's designed. But unfortunately, what's happened is the way the world has come about is we have stepped out of that connection. And by stepping out of that connection, all of these weird and horrible things are starting to happen to us. And then they come up with more and more chemicals or, or cutting and slicing and burning and all these things to do this magnificent machine to bring you back into balance and we have accepted that and we've accepted it only because we're not thinking any longer we've crowded ourselves up with so much toxicity that we don't think for ourselves anymore we just assume that everybody out there knows better than us you know when my children were born and i did natural childbirth in 1970 it wasn't popular then and i didn't do it because i was wise and smart i did it because i was terrified of having children and my ex had found he said uh, i forgot what i did uh what's it what was it called uh i mean my kids are four no 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 i didn't do that lamaze lamaze had just come to uh, come into vogue then and i did lamaze and so that's when i started really getting into this whole health thing you know i had started beforehand while i was pregnant and then doing lamaze it just kind of really took me over the top and i was learning all the breathing and, all, and then i decided i was going to breastfeed and after my children were born the first doctor i went to they told me that i had to come for nine months and each month they tell me what to feed the baby but because I had started kind of healing myself, I started thinking, now, this is a man. He's never had children. How's he going to know what my baby needs? How's he going to know where my family, my history, my environment is coming from? How's he going to tell me I know what to feed my baby? And then I found another pediatrician who was holistic at that time, which was really unique. Uh, he later went to work on one of the islands because he just couldn't stand what was going on in the cities any longer. And he said he didn't believe that children should have any food other than breast milk the first five to six months of their lives because their digestive tract hadn't finished forming. And that's why so many adults had problems with their digestion later on in life. 
because they started food and stuff much too simple. And how about the kids getting this Frankenstein monster stuff? I see people giving their kids frappuccinos. I see people giving their kids these blue ice cream cones. What in nature is blue other than the sky? We don't need it, you know? People are doing all these weird things, but nobody thinks it's weird because everybody's doing it. So what I'm all about is helping people to wake up so that you at least see the weirdness that I do, and maybe you're going to still do weird, but at least you know it's weird. <laughs> you know, you aren't accepting it as this is just okay. At least you know it's weird. I haven't gone a path from start to finish doing everything perfectly. Believe me, I have my backward steps. Every time I open up another cooked restaurant, I'm on the merry-go-round faster than anybody else because the food is so delicious, and it's acidic, and we get addicted to acid. And it's so easy to want more and more and more. And I jump right on that. And do I know how to do better? Absolutely. When I opened up my first cook restaurant, Victoris Kovinskas, who was my teacher, said, I said, Victor, I haven't eaten cooked foods that I don't know, been 10, 15 years. What am I going to do? And he said, well, Karen, uh, you put the food in your mouth, you taste it, and then you spit it out. Because owning the store with my name on it, I have to taste the food, I tell myself. No, you really do. So I said, what am I going to do? He says, Chew it and spit it out. That way you'll get the taste and the flavors and you won't be getting the cooked food in your system. Great idea. So I did it the first three, four times and pretty soon I swallowed it and then pretty soon I was eating a little bit more and eating a little more. And I'm not talking about eating huge portions of food. I'm talking about sampling little bits here and there. I was on a six month bender of cooked foods and I didn't realize it until I did Bill Campbell's show, which I did every year for 10 years up until this year. And I saw myself on TV and it was like I had changed totally. Had I gotten huge? No. But you could just see I had a tired look. I'd start getting a little bags under my eyes. I've done no work, guys. I've done no surgery, no, uh, you know, Restylane or Botox or any of the stuff they're doing. And I have no judgment on anybody choosing to do that, except that you do know you're a guinea pig because they have no idea what that's going to be doing to you 20, 30 years from now. But, you know, we choose to be guinea pigs for different things. So... I, I saw myself on TV and it was like, who is that? And it wasn't like you'd look at me and go, oh, she's put on. But I had put on weight. I was puffy looking. I, my body odor was different. I didn't stink, but I had a different body odor. And it was just from eating cooked foods. And it affected me a lot quicker because my system wasn't used to it. So it was like, oh, my God, what have I done? You see, because everything out here is a clear picture of what's going on internally in your body. You see, this ugly man was a beautiful little boy once. You know, he was beautiful once. And all these lines and things that have come out on his skin is just a picture of what's going on internally on the inside of his body. This is our mirror to what's going on inside. So the lines that you get across your forehead, you're not a deep thinker. I know you'd like to think you are. <laughs> <laughs> but that's excessive mucus in the digestive tract. Okay? These lines that you get under your eyes, you notice if you go out drinking or things, they're, they're deeper and thicker. Well, these are your adrenals and your kidneys. They're filtering way too much coffee and soda pop and alcohol, or you're under a lot of stress. I had dark circles under all my baby pictures, and I used to say to my mother, didn't I get any sleep? I had a very difficult childhood. I was stressed out, so I had dark, real black, like a panda, dark circles under my eyes. Um, these lines that we get here, this is our small intestines and our liver. And you can see one side can be deeper than the other side. And, and uh, oh, the turkey gobbler, this under here, I used to have that as a skinny little girl. Those are your organs prolapsing internally. You're not going to the bathroom enough. And you may think you're going if you're going once or twice a day. But here's the deal. If you're eating three meals a day, you should be making three deal times a day. If you're eating five times a day, you should be making five times a day. If you're not, where did it go and what's it doing? It isn't evaporating internally. Where did it go and what's it doing? What goes in must come out. And if it doesn't, you're in trouble. And those of you going to the bathroom once a week or every other day, or even once a day. If you're eating all day long, it's not enough. What's staying in there, it's rotting, it's putrefying, it's making you have stinky breath, it's making you stinky armpits, all these smells and things are coming out of you, especially if you're eating a lot of meat and chicken, because I call that the dead cemetery syndrome. You know, you're walking around with a dead cemetery in here and all these smells are coming out of you. So this is prolapsed organs, you're not going to the bathroom enough. 
But here's the beauty of everything. Remember I said the body is a self-regenerating organism. So it can all be turned around. So that's the number one thing, the first free thing I'm going to give you today that can change your life as far as I'm concerned is cleansing and detoxing the body a minimum of four times a year. Now I know it's the buzzword.